Cause I'm wanted on a steel horse I ride. I'm wanted. You can't sue me because this isn't copyright infringement because I'm singing it myself. Dead or alive. Guys, this is the Outlaw 1200 made by Perdeco Tech. I'm gonna go into this, converted it. It was an e-bike to begin with. Now it's still an e-bike. Converted an e-bike into an e-bike. If you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerd Out. I convert bikes into e-bikes and sometimes e-bikes into better e-bikes. So I'm gonna go over this bike, what we did to it, why it no longer sucks. Guys, this is a cautionary tale. <laughs> I don't know why it's not like a creepy, it's not a scary tale, but can be. This definitely can be a scary tale if you're the owner of a bike like this. But this is definitely a cautionary tale. So this is a Prodeco Outlaw 1200. Customer called me up and said, I fried my controller. I can't get any support from Prodeco. I can't even find where this controller came from. What can you do? Can you help me? And I, I was like, all right, well, bring me the controller. I started looking it up. I couldn't find it anywhere. So now it's like, so so that's one of the problems with pre-made e-bikes. Prodeco was a, a big brand. They were they were a reputable brand and they're at, at some point in time. And then they just go out of business for one reason or another. They get too bloated, too convoluted. And now you've got something that good luck trying to find parts for. And that's why when people tell me hub motors don't suck, hub motors are great. Depends. <laughs> All hub motors need an external controller and all the external controllers are different depending on which kind of motor you get. And there's so many different types of hub motors out there that you just better hope that they're supported in two or three years when you need support. Hub motors are great as long as they work as they should. But as soon as they stop working and you need to replace it, oh, that's where the troubles come in. And that's where this customer found out. I said, we could continue this search. It's gonna cost money just trying to find this thing or I can convert it into a mid drive and just upgrade it. We could reuse your battery. So he's like, let's just do that. Let's just do that. I don't wanna deal with this anymore. Let's upgrade it, bring it into the 21st century. So that's what we did. You can see this is actually a decent bike to begin with. It's got rock shocks, front suspension on it, hydraulic disc brakes, and they're not, they're like good components on everything. Big tires. Yeah, 26 by 2.4 inch tires. So I mean, they're, this is a beefy bike. It's just, you know, it's heavy with that giant boat anchor of a motor back there. Um, he decided, I'm gonna try to keep this cost as minimal as possible, but still get like a great bike out of it. So he's like, all right. So it does have an extra 12 pounds of a boat anchor back there. Um, the battery is up here. It's a 48 volt, 12 amp hour battery that came with it from Prodeco. You can see, obviously it's not ideal to leave it here, but we're, we're using the existing components. You know, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. If the battery's still good, reuse it until it dies. When this battery dies, then I'm gonna recommend putting one down here. So we put a BBS HD motor on it. It's a thousand watt motor, um, but it will draw 30 amps. So you do the math, that's over 1500 watts with a 48 volt battery. It wasn't very difficult to rewire this battery in. A lot of times you just gotta find all batteries have a plus and a negative. Sometimes they'll have different communication wires out of it. Really all you need is just the, the plus and minus out of it. And then it plugs right into it. So it wasn't very difficult. I did have to take this battery pack apart to find those wires and then you know you put on your own connectors like the anderson connectors and then i always put on anderson connectors onto the motors i like those connectors the best we went with the c965 black and white display uh, but it shows you all your information it shows you everything except for a digital voltage readout so it just has like that bar graph on it but it keeps it's like a it's like a normal bike computer it shows you your speed average max speed trip odometer all that stuff uh, we put a gear shift sensor on it because it is a mid drive it just acts like an automatic clutch kills power for a second while you're shifting. If you're a motorcycle rider, you understand that analogy. Like, oh yeah, it just clicks. If you're not, Google it. <laughs> yeah, it's got hydraulic brakes. So we put hydraulic disc brake cutoffs on it. This one was fairly easy. Just put them on the little nodules here. Just super glued the pickups on it. This has got, I think a 32 in the rear and a 46 up front. So the hill climbing is not gonna be the greatest on this, but that's easily changeable by swooping this out. So let's go do a Johnny Nerdout test where I climb hills without pedaling from a dead stop and a rolling start. And then I also test top speed.
Okay, so top speed was 34 miles an hour. That's perfectly what I would expect with a 48 volt battery. You can bump it up to a 52 and maybe get one or two more miles per hour out of it. Um, and maybe a little bit better on the hill climbing as well with the 52 volt. You see hill climbing, it didn't want to climb it from, a, from right at the, the, the crest of the thing. So if I scooted it back like three feet, it, would, it, would, it squeaked up, but I had to kind of go off on an angle. So I kind of cheated on this one. Still better than any hub motor, still better than the hub motor that was in it. Um, but you switch this out with a smaller one, put a 36 tooth on there, and all of a sudden this thing will be doing wheelies if you, on accident if you don't want it to and climbing that hill with no problem. I think I'm biased because I deal with people day in and day out. People call me all the time, their motor stopped working, their bike isn't working. And I'm like, well, can you get help from the manufacturer? No, they're out of business now. Two, three years ago, a lot of these businesses were thriving and you're like, oh yeah, this is great. But it's the same thing that's gonna happen today. A lot of these giants are gonna be out of business three or four years from now because bad management and they go under. They get too bloated, too full of themselves, they go under. But in the meantime, they're putting on hub motors with proprietary parts, which are not good. That's not good for you in the long term. You wanna be using universal parts. Bafang is the most ubiquitous motor in the world. They sell the most. You could buy the replacement parts on these on Amazon. You could do all the repair work yourself. That's why I strongly recommend, if, you, if you're a follower of my channel, you know I've been preaching this for years. You buy one of these motors, you could fix everything yourself with watching a YouTube video for cheap. I mean, a brand new motor core of these are like 200 bucks, which is like the motor core is like the entire thing. Buying a brand new motor is cheap because everything else, you already have everything else that works, like the display, your throttle, everything else. Anyways, I digress. But picking out your components are very important and finding the manufacturer is very important too. So let this be another lesson, hopefully. Thanks a lot, guys. Smash that button. Not sure which button, just if you find a button near you, even if it's like on your on your jacket, smash that button. Uh, ring ring a bell. I think you're supposed to do that if you find a bell. Um, not sure where you even find bells anymore, so I don't know. If you find a bell, if you come across a bell in the wild, ring it. And you're still also supposed to subscribe. That's what, people, that's what my producer tells me. I'm supposed to tell people to smash buttons, ring bells, and subscribe. All right, thanks guys.